Hello geometry students. I hope you're having a nice weekend. I have a video here for our next lesson. Let's get started. Alright, here's a typical equation I'm going to ask you to look at and solve. The problem here is we have fractions. I don't think you want to subtract three-fifths on both sides, do you? You could. Uh, give us a little practice with uh, subtracting fractions, finding common denominators. But there's an easier way, right? That easier way is to multiply both sides of the equation by 5. And of course, remember, to keep the equation to be true, in other words, to keep both sides equal to each other, you have to do the exact same thing to both sides. So multiplying both sides by 5 is, is going to keep the equation true. Both sides are still going to be equal. But what happens, of course, is we get rid of the fractions because 5 and this 5 will cancel out. Likewise, these two 5s will cancel out. And our next step looks like that. x plus 3 equals 35. And of course, x would then equal 32. So the lesson to be learned here is not just review of algebra, but it's the fact that we can take what, two things that start equal, multiply them both by the same number, and they will stay equal. Well, why don't we take a look at objects instead of an equation. Let's take a look at objects. If I tell you that these two segments are congruent, of course, that's very similar to being equal. But since they're two different segments, we call them congruent. But their measures are equal. Now, what if we tripled each one? Let's see if I can do that here. Okay, so I'm tripling the first one. Okay, so that first segment is successfully tripled. It's three times what it used to be. And let's do the same with the other one. Doubled, so multiply by two. And then I'll attach this one, and now it is tripled. Now, do you think these two new segments are still congruent? Well, if you think about it, let's say they both, both segments started off as being t uh, a measure of 2. So this was 2, and this was 2. Well, this segment is now 2, 4, 6. And this segment, likewise, is 2, 4, 6. What if they both started off to be 3? Well, then we'd have 3, 6, 9. The length of this segment would be 9. Likewise, we would have 3, 6, 9 here. So let's relate that to the algebra equation on the last slide. When you multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, the, equ the equation stays true. Both sides are still equal. If you multiply both segments by the same value, then the new segments are still going to be congruent. How does that relate to angles? Well, let's start here with two congruent angles. Now remember, we're starting with two congruent angles. So the equation is set. This angle is congruent to this angle. What if we divided this angle, divided the same number on both sides of the equation, or in this case, divided both angles by the same value. Uh, in other words, let's trisect these angles. OK, the, the angles are trisected. Now, would let's look at these angles as three adjacent angles. Yes, we can make more overlapping angles. But let's just look at it as uh, we have angle 1, 2, and 3 up here, and angle 4, 5, and 6 down here. So based on the fact that these green angles started off to be congruent, and we trisected both of them, so we divided both of them by 3, would angle 1 up here be congruent to angle 4 down here? Well, think about it. If you started with 9, let's say they both 
had a uh, value of 9. And if you divided 3, divided both sides by 3, that's trisecting, you would have 3, 3, and 3, wouldn't you? So it follows that when you multiply or divide congruent angles by the same amount, you're going to end up with congruent angles and segments also. So in words, here it is. Here's a couple more theorems for you. We have the multiplication property and we have the division property. Multiplication property, if segments or angles are congruent to begin with, like an equation, their like multiples are congruent. Simply means if you multiply both segments by a number, the new segments will be congruent. And it works for angles. And it works likewise for division. So if you want to pause the video and take these down into your notebook, I would recommend that. Finally, let's take a look at a proof. As always, we need as much practice as we can get with these proofs. So here's a new one using our new material. Okay, so the situation here is we have uh, our triangle over here and we have SZ congruent to ST. As I tell you guys, mark up your picture. Put it in your notebook and mark up your picture. So I am going to mark SZ, this segment, to be congruent to ST. It's also given to us that XY is congruent to VW. Okay. We're also given that Y is the midpoint of ZX and V is the midpoint of TW. So if you want to pause the video and look and, and, and see what you can do here, see uh, pr uh, plan this out mentally, what you might want to do here, of course it's good to know what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that SX, this entire side, is congruent to SW. So think about how you could make that happen. How could you show that this whole side is congruent to this whole side based on the given information? Well, let's start the proof by laying out the given. Um, in this case, I think we can lay all the given out. Okay, so notice I have the uh, first two given elements and then the third one. I'm going to kind of truncate the two midpoint, <coughs> uh, the two midpoints that were given and just say, hey, we have the two midpoints up here. There they are in the picture, Y and V, and that's given to us. All right, now, right away, we can use our new, one of our brand new theorems. Because a midpoint, knowing that y is a midpoint, we are basically going to double yx, are we not? Knowing v is a midpoint, we are going to double or multiply by 2 vw, and that will give us these segments right here. So let's see what I found out. We can write based on that. ZY is congruent to TV. And we can say that like multiples of congruent segments are congruent. Uh, what I'm saying here is we already know that these two segments were congruent. And if we multiply those by 2, the new segments are going to be congruent. And actually it's ZX is congruent to TW, which of course will lead us to say that these two segments, ZY, are, is congruent to TV. And to finish off the proof, that should be enough, right? Because if we have now another set of congruent segments, and if we add congruent segments to congruent segments, we are going to get congruent sums. So now we can say that SX is congruent to SW because sums of congruent segments are congruent. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go get a glass of milk. Thank you for listening.